Hello and good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me for those who normally are interested and in following my scientific journey on COVID-19. I am Dr. Philip McMillan and my focus has been on viral mediated autoimmunity from the beginning of the pandemic. And within that paradigm, I'm able to explain almost every angle about the pandemic what works, what doesn't work, why it doesn't work, why what works, works. And within that framework, I'm going to be talking about a really interesting story. It's not really a story, but it's all about a conference that was held in Canada recently. So it was a mining conference. So it's a big mining conference. And at the conference, one of the presenters, I think the CEO of this company here, which is K92 Mining Incorporated, they operate out of Papua New Guinea. And so what he did is that he was talking about their gold mining operation in Papua New Guinea. And he made reference at the end of the presentation to the fact that this country had a really low vaccination rate. And he said the outcomes are interesting. And he asked, why wouldn't the scientific community look at this? And so I was informed about this and I thought, wow, that is interesting. From a scientific point of view, I would absolutely want to look at this and try and understand a little bit more about what could be going on. So the first thing that I would do is help us all to get our bearings with regards to what is going on. And before I start that, I'd like to apologize to my viewership that I haven't been around for about a week. What was the reason, you may ask? Well, it was a conference or a discussion that I had on the 28th of January. The stuff that I discussed was not considered to be appropriate. And as such, I was taken down for a week. So I apologize if anything that we said in that discussion was not able to be handled by you, the listener. You clearly don't have enough insight to know what is what. So guess where it is? As usual, it is on Substack. So it can't be shown here on YouTube, but if you wanted to take a look at it and you had the scientific news to try and differentiate truth from otherwise, this is probably one of the most important discussions for the year so far. And so that's my advice. Take a look um, on my Substack if you want to follow that up. But getting right back to the point countries with high vaccine hesitancy. Let's get ourselves acquainted with regards to Papua New Guinea. So here is a map of the world using Google Maps. And you can see here Australia. Well, down here is Thailand. Uh, you can see Indonesia. You can see Australia. You can see New Zealand here. And here is Papua New Guinea. So it is just above Australia. And the population is about 9 million compared to Australia, which is about 25 million. And so in effect, this country is um, quite spread out. 85% of the country lives in rural areas. And of course, one of the big challenges they've been having is with regards to vaccine hesitancy. Now, you have to remember, I'm not specifically talking about COVID vaccines yet. I'm just talking about generally. So when you looked at this paper here, I've brought this up, Disrupted Care in Papua New Guinea, the harms of COVID-19, they were making reference to the fact that there is a problem generally in Papua New Guinea. The, the play is low, the work is essential. Um, essentially, mosquitoes are everywhere. There is no telephone. Um, they were struggling approaches to tackle malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS. And they have been struggling for some time to get this information across. So this is not new for Papua New Guinea. And it's something that the WHO and the government is working at to try and overcome hesitancy generally in Papua New Guinea. Now, we do know about some of these other diseases, malaria and TB, and that there are treatments and there are ways that we can manage it. And so there is clear clear benefit for trying to overcome some of the resistance that exists within the community. So they specifically then looked 
in a little bit more detail about what were the drivers for this vaccine hesitancy in Papua New Guinea. And here we have another interesting paper. And this paper is looking at how to address the Pap um, uh, vaccine hesitancy in Papua New Guinea. And so they were pointing out it's one of the poorest countries in Asia Pacific. 85% of the country live outside of cities. And so that point, they had the Delta variant taking off. And so they were looking to try and vaccinate the public. And I'll roll down to the bottom here. When they did a phone survey in May and June 2021 about participation in vaccination, 53% had no intention, only 18% planned, and 29% were unsure. And so you can see here that this is a country that generally is quite vaccine hesitant. And what were their responses to the questions? They found, based on this, they said that the main reason, 78% were worried about side effects, 53% don't trust vaccines at all, 23% don't think the vaccine will work. Now, I wonder why they would have such strange thoughts about what could be happening with regards to COVID-19. And this depth of vaccine hesitancy was explored even further in an online survey experiment where they went further to look at this. And they were confirmed, they were looking at what would cause people to change their views, whether it came from family and friends, medical professionals, would be 49%, 19% would be religious leaders. So one of the things that this indicates is that in order for this country to be so vaccine hesitant, it also suggests to a certain degree that maybe medical professionals are also vaccine hesitant in Papua New Guinea. I wonder why. So the question then becomes, well, how did that play out in the context of the pandemic. Because if you have a country that is so vaccine hesitant, you know, what would it mean if they weren't vaccinated? So when we look at the numbers, it turns out that Papua New Guinea only had 4.15% of the population who was vaccinated. Now, wow, she's just as surprised as me. It's incredible. And so within that framework, the, our thought would be, Absolutely, this country should be decimated by COVID-19. Am I right? What really does the numbers say? Let's start with a comparison. So the first thing we will do is we'll look at a country that's close by. That's Australia. Remember on the map, Australia is just um, south of Papua New Guinea. And when we look at these statistics from John Hopkins, Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, they administered 64 million doses to 22 million people at least getting one dose. 87% of the population in Australia had a vaccine. Now that's incredible. So you can imagine, but well, Australia did tremendously well with regards to the vaccination program, and they really got it through to the population by force, but sometimes um, a little bit of, of, of pressure on the population, but they got it done. On the other hand, Papua New Guinea. In Papua New Guinea, what we have here is that we have only 715,000 doses admit, administered to a population of about 9 million, 4.15% had at least one dose. That's very sad, isn't it? I mean, what would that mean? Papua New Guinea would probably end up being decimated by COVID-19 just because of vaccine hesitancy. Now, isn't that sad? But when we look at science, the important thing about it is that we don't make assumptions. We look at outcomes. We don't presume that suddenly because they are vaccine hesitant, they will all die. We actually look and see, well, what actually happened? So when we look at first Australia, to give ourselves context here. So in Australia, population 25 million, they had about 18,000 deaths. 
that's where, and you have to remember, when you look at the timeline here for Australia, Australia had closed down its borders. Remember, this was the country that wouldn't let Novak Djokovic get in because he wasn't vaccinated. So they locked down. Only the vaccinated were allowed to travel to Australia. And critically, they closed their borders almost completely. And you can see perfectly on that, that trajectory of no infection until about January 2022, borders open. And by this time, they'd had the majority of the population vaccinated. And you can see these are cases, these surges, and they still haven't quite finished. And these are the deaths in Australia. And so even though they had an 87% vaccination um, uptake in Australia, the argument would be without vaccines, Australia would have had much worse outcomes. And that's what we all say, and that's the presumption. But does that play out in the context of reality? So let's look back at Papua New Guinea. And in Papua New Guinea here, you have 46,000 confirmed cases, 670 deaths, vaccination rate 4.15%. When we look at this here, their peak death rate in October, well, actually, it was just beyond October, in November, was 15 deaths on a day. Then it tailed off, and that's where they are now. Barely any cases, barely any deaths. Now, that's real world. And this is where I differentiate between real world science versus presumed science. In real world science, we look at the outcomes. We try and understand how is that possible? That's where this lady is saying, wow, oh my goodness. How in the world is that possible? 4.15% vaccination rate. And at the moment they are running at zero deaths. That's Papua New Guinea. What can we learn from it? What is the science behind it? Why is no one interested? And this was the question that was asked initially by K2 Mining. He was genuinely asking the question. They are operating out of Papua New Guinea and they are not seeing any pandemic. They are not seeing any deaths. He is asking with a country that is so poorly vaccinated, how is that possible? Remember, they are working on the ground. And so it leads me to the final piece of this discussion. Well, the two reasons you could ask, ask, one, could it just be natural immunity? They've all got natural immunity and therefore they don't get severe COVID. That's one part of it. But could there be anything else? This bit, I don't know if it's relevant, but I'm going to share it with you and you can look at the links and tell me in your own unscientific way whether or not you think this is important. Coincidentally, in 2021, the WHO, because this is from the World Health Organization, had stepped up efforts to eliminate lymphatic filariasis. And so they were working to do this. This is September 20, September 2021. They were working to try and resolve this. And they did a major push in Papua New Guinea to try and see if they can penetrate into some of the rural areas to try and get their treatment in place in Papua New Guinea. What do you think that treatment would be? Mm, I wonder what they did. So this is about a disease, a lymphatic filariasis, and you can see it here. Um, it's mosquito-borne, three parasites, they said, that can cause it, transmitted between humans by mosquitoes. And so this is what they were trying to treat at the time. And the question then becomes, what did they use? And was it purely coincidental that what they used in Papua New Guinea, could it have been a part of the reason why Papua New Guinea had such a remarkable outcome with regards to COVID-19. So I'm looking through this document here, and I want to tell you exactly what it is. I'm trying to find it. I should have looked at it before to remember exactly where it is. So yes, and I'll show it to you now. 
uh, bits here. And so this is what they did. In 2017, they issued a new recommendation on triple drug therapy, a combination of albendazole, DEC, and that very strange drug that I am not allowed to say. It starts with I, ends with N, and has some kind of mech in it. Is that coincidental? I don't know. But here's the reality. We are at a time where outcomes matter. Not what you think outcomes should be, but real outcomes matter. We can't afford to just be going along expecting outcomes to work when they don't seem to fit in the box. I think that it is time for us to challenge our leadership to look at these things. This is remarkable when you look at what has happened here. The pandemic is over in Papua New Guinea. It's not over, however, in many parts of the first world. We need to understand why. Let us celebrate the success of Papua New Guinea. Let us celebrate what they have done. It may be accidental, maybe non-intentional. It doesn't matter, but it's very valuable from a scientific point of view for us to be able to try and understand. I hope that you will be open to science and open to trying to find solutions to problems around us, even when it doesn't seem to fit completely in the box. So that's my lesson for today. And I hope that you have found it valuable. Please, if you want to hear more interesting and fascinating information that can't necessarily be shared otherwise, please join me on Substack.